This is wonderful. Best tiramisu I've ever had. <sighs> Maybe too much rum. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst things Roger Smith has done on American Dad. Hey, where, where are y'all going? For this list, we're looking at instances where this alien, as well as his personas, crossed a line that would even have the xenomorph queen saying, whoa, that's too much, man. What do you think Roger's most infamous deed is? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, his lawsuit scam. As Steve tries to make an honest living mowing lawns, Roger introduces him to a much quicker route to fortune. Lying about an injury, Roger threatens to sue an elderly neighbor unless he coughs up $1,000. Roger, please don't do this. Mr. Hallworthy's always been very sweet to me. As sweet as owning that PlayStation you've been lusting after? Back me up and I'll buy it for you. Faking injuries to extort money out of people is one thing. Roger takes it a step further by actually busting up Steve's feeble body. From major companies to a little girl's lemonade stand, Roger will scam anybody to make a quick buck. Steve's bones and severed ear are just occupational hazards. At least he pays Steve's medical bills, only to send him right back into surgery. Thankfully, Roger didn't damage Steve's brain. He uses his wits to outsmart Roger, conning a con artist. So... The face becomes the brain, and the brain is stuck in Mexico without a penny. Number 19, becoming a crooked cop. After Roger is given a badge, it isn't a matter of if he'll misuse his power, it's a matter of when. Three hours into the job, Roger's already claiming dirty money and beating up anyone who stands in his way. I guess when it comes to hitting people in the head with a baseball bat, I'm the natural. Laugh! Roger uses his position to inflict cruel and unusual punishment upon interrogees. Beyond criminals and the accused, Roger harasses the public for his own amusement as well. This infuriates Stan, despite not being the most honest lawman himself. To his credit, Roger's semblance of a conscience gets the better of him when fellow crooked cop Chaz tells him to off Stan. Roger comes through for Stan, although he still gets blood on his elbow we'll spare you the graphic aftermath. So, have you heard anything? Is Chaz gonna be okay? No. Okay. Number 18, his breakup revenge on Klaus. Roger and Klaus. It was bound to be a messy hookup with an even messier breakup. When Klaus loses interest in the relationship, Roger tries to spice things up by becoming his adopted daughter. Well, looks like you're in the middle of something, so... After being rejected by Klaus again, Roger makes some very serious accusations that get the fish arrested. But I'm a fish! A sick fish who's going away for a long time. Of course, this backfires since Klaus is taken even further away from Roger. To get under the same roof as Klaus, Roger starts committing heinous crimes. By the time Roger is thrown in prison with him, Klaus has already moved on with another inmate, who gets caught in the middle of this lover's quarrel. Roger eventually moves on, but innocent fish were incarcerated and prisoners were shivved along the way. Become a Watch Mojo channel member and get exclusive perks like Mojo emojis, loyalty badges, priority comment replies, and exclusive members-only content, including live list rankings with the Mojo staff and peeks behind the scenes. Don't miss out. Number 17, sending a guitarist to hell. Roger has gotten countless people killed, although this is one of the most unique examples. It's also among the pettiest. Annoyed by a musician named Jamal, Roger agrees to a guitar battle. Loser never shows his face in here again. I'll do you one better. The loser never comes back here, even in a mask. The problem is Roger can't play the instrument, resorting to selling his soul to gain the necessary skills. Roger wins the wager, but at what price? Well, we guess a price he'll never have to pay. Roger tricks Jamal into taking his place, and the guitarist is dragged to hell instead. All Jamal wanted was to make a living sharing his music with the world. Since Roger wasn't a fan, Jamal must endure eternal damnation. And to think, Roger probably wouldn't have returned to the coffee shop anyway. <laughs> Number 16, trying to get rid of Christmas. 
Let's get Jui! Feeling neglected by his family on Christmas, Roger converts to Judaism and celebrates Hanukkah. While that's fine and dandy, he naturally takes things too far after attaining Santa's magic. Roger destroys his family's Christmas decorations, attempting to force his newfound beliefs upon them. What's more, Roger makes a disgrace of Hanukkah, much to Snot's frustration. Santa ultimately repossesses his powers, although Roger rounds out the eight days by running over his reindeer. And by reindeer, we mean college students. This wouldn't be the last time Roger spoiled Christmas. Whoa, Roger. I am not Roger anymore. Call me the Grouch. Donning a Grinch-like persona, Roger starts snatching up people's adult toys, sucking the debauchery and sin out of his holy night. Hopefully something grows three sizes by the holiday's end, by which we mean his heart. Number 15, sending Steve to a drug lab. It doesn't take much to trigger Roger. In fact, it's usually the smallest things that snowball into his worst deeds. After Steve calls him regular, Roger exacts revenge by sending him to Hogwarts, which is really just a crack den. I know it doesn't look like much, but- Oh, you muggles. Clearly there is a spell at work here hiding the true appearance of the school. You wouldn't understand how these things work. Under the illusion that he's special, Steve fails to recognize the danger he's in or the illegal substances that he's brewing with fellow students. Since Steve gets a cut of the muggle drug money, Roger doesn't clue him in. When Steve brings the product home, Roger goes Tony Montana on the drug dealers. Although Roger's rampage can be chalked up to self-defense, he still nearly gets Steve killed, destroys the house, and breaks several laws. Well, at least this proves he's not regular. Number 14, burying Francine. When Stan ditches her on a trip to wine country, a drunken Francine finds herself on the other end of a kiss from an equally drunken Roger. Roger! What? God, why did you do that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't mean, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm drunk. Both immediately regret it, but they disagree on whether to tell Stan. Not wanting to lose Stan's friendship, Roger does the most practical thing. Knocks out Francine, buries her alive, and tries to get Stan to kiss another woman, therefore canceling out his kiss with Francine. When that doesn't go as planned, Roger claims that it was Francine who kissed him. So, you admit it! You kissed Roger! What? No! He kissed me! Lie! Roger is willing to let Stan divorce Francine over this. Since that would mean losing his attic, however, Roger finally tells Stan the truth. After burying him alive as well. That only delays the inevitable. Number 13, running a handbag sweatshop. Hi, it's me, Roger. On multiple occasions, Roger has subjected people to inhumane manual labor. After enslaving his foster children in one episode, he starts an illegal handbag sweatshop in another. Although the evidence against him is damning, Roger wins over the judge, most of the jury, and even the prosecutor with one of his most lovable personas, Martin Sugar. Having Stan on the jury seems like a bonus for Roger. However, Stan is tired of watching Roger get away with murder, forcing the jury to turn in a guilty verdict. Following an escape, Stan tracks Roger down, but the CIA agent soon finds himself on trial for another incident. And guess who's on the jury? Crime doesn't pay, but that doesn't mean you can't get off scot-free. Number 12, becoming a tyrant. To be fair, Stan deserves at least half of the blame for this. Accidentally killing a dictator before a treaty can be signed, Stan tricks Roger into filling his shoes and mustache. I hate to say it because I hate you, but you really do know what looks good on me. Yes, it fits you perfectly. Oblivious, Roger inadvertently orders the deaths of several servants. Roger didn't realize what he was doing, but it isn't long until the truth comes out. Out of resentment towards Stan, Roger embraces his position as ruler. He orders his overworked subjects to paint the entire island yellow and then turquoise. Roger's ridiculous demands push the people to their limits, inspiring them to paint the town red with their leader's blood. Stan helps Roger fake his death paving the way for an even more ruthless dictator to take his place. Number 11, injuring students to win a talent show. It's weird how so many Roger-centric episodes quickly escalate into horror territory. To help Steve win a talent show, Roger poses as his ventriloquist dummy, Mr. Dingleberry. Wow, 
Wow, you move just like a dummy. Now, Steve, why do you think I slapped you? It's because you used a certain word. Do you know what that word is? Is it? That's right. Roger soon gets too deep into character, staging a series of freak accidents to take out the competition. While that singer is especially rude, he did not deserve to have a weight dropped on his larynx. And Barry definitely did not deserve to be locked in a sauna. Somebody help! Dingleberry even framed his former ventriloquist for murder. Wow, I really should have looked further into this book before I started this whole thing. But when he traps Snot in an escape tank, Steve saves the day and snaps Roger out of it by washing off his makeup. Although he does get shot in the process. Oh my god, somebody shot Steve! Oh my god, I shot Steve! Number 10. Convincing a woman to take her own life. Being the most unstable character on the show, it's baffling that the family constantly seeks out Roger's psychiatrist persona, Mr. Penguin, for guidance. Wow, wow, well, stop, 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 stop! Roger Smith, pretend psychiatrist. Sounds like you could use my help. When Francine's friend Julie learns that Stan killed her husband, Mr. Penguin is tasked with trying to calm the hysterical widow down. Rather than talking Julie off a ledge, though, he encourages her to jump. Fortunately, Stan and Francine rush in before the noose around Julie's neck can take its toll. Worse still, Julie's husband is still alive and Roger knew it. Your husband's not dead. What? Craig is alive? This was all part of a complicated plan to get Francine to stop nagging Stan about sharing, but there was absolutely no reason for Roger to sit back and let Julie hang herself. And it worked brilliantly. Ah! Number 9. Trying to get rid of AJ On top of babysitting Bullock's son AJ, Francine also had to deal with an envious Roger, who can't fathom the idea of anyone else receiving more attention than him. Look, I don't have time for you right now. I'm busy. Ah! Busy? I was here first! Still, Roger grows fond of little AJ. So much so that after the Bullocks take their baby home, Roger kidnaps him. I'm sick of taking care of this! AJ? Where's AJ? Nevertheless, it appears that Roger wants to be a good big brother to AJ. Until he damages his favorite crystal spider. Since babies shouldn't be in reach of breakables anyway, this is really Roger's fault. Roger doesn't see things that way, however, feeling it necessary to drive AJ into a lake. While Roger's plan is thwarted by Stan, he was still going to drown a baby over virtually nothing. Shut up! This whole situation is out of control! Number 8. His Revenge on the Smith Family For his birthday, Roger tells the family he wants a Comedy Central-style roast. Roger insists that they hold nothing back, and he seemingly takes their brutal insults in stride. Behind his sunglasses, though, Roger is drowning in his own tears. Why? Why would you do this? What? What did I ever do to any of you to make you say those incredibly hurtful things? Words can hurt, but it is exactly what he asked for. Regardless, Roger not only scorns the family for being so mean, he also plots to destroy all of them. And no, Roger sure did leave in a hurry. You... you don't think Roger had something to do with the explosion? Following an explosion, a shootout, and a car accident, the Smiths retreat to space where Roger hunts them down in a surprisingly creepy sequence. In spite of everything, the Smiths ensure Roger that just because they made fun of him doesn't mean he isn't loved. Um, is that a touching ending? <laughs> oh my god! I am a part of this family! You do love me! I feel it now! Number 7. Framing Kevin Bacon for a Hit and Run Dressed as Kevin Bacon, Roger abuses his newfound fame to get free stuff and treat people like garbage. I'm gonna wear these out. Great! I'll ring those up for you. Jump back! Do you know who I am, clerk face? Suddenly, Roger ditches the bacon nose, apologizing to Stephen Haley for being such a jerk. Could it be that Roger actually saw the light and took a step back before going too far? And the worst part is, it almost cost me my friends. Hugs! Of course not. Seconds later, it's revealed that Roger, while impersonating Bacon, ran over an elderly man with a car and drove off, but not before shooting a traffic cam. Although the evidence shows that he physically could not have done it, the real Bacon is arrested for Roger's crime. Being responsible for a likely fatal hit-and-run and sending an innocent man to jail doesn't phase Roger even remotely. Roger? I'm gonna turn this cheese sandwich into a panini. Yes. Delizioso! Number 6. Selling someone when he couldn't pay for drugs As Stan tries to get on a senator's good side, Roger, standing in for Steve, strikes up a friendship with the politician's daughter. Don't be late for class, you two. So, Cookie, do you like ponies? 
Unfortunately, the one thing they have in common is substance use disorder. Feeding into a teen girl's problem is already beyond irresponsible. But Roger outdoes himself when he sells her to hostile drug dealers. You know how you said try to be friends with the senator's daughter? Yeah? Well, it began like that, and then middle, 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 and then I sold her to a drug dealer. The end. Sure, they were threatening to shoot Roger in the head if he didn't pay up, but throwing a girl under the bus is still reprehensible, especially considering he only owed 300 bucks. On the plus side, the dealers did sweeten the deal by referring Roger to a good plumber, but we'd hardly call that a fair trade. JKM Plumbing's coming on Tuesday, so we can put the wooden spoon back in the kitchen. No more having to chop up our dumps. Number 5. Poisoning Steve and Snot Taking a page from Romeo and Juliet, Roger provides Steve and Snot with fake poison, believing it will mend the bond between their feuding mothers. Unfortunately, Roger mistakenly gives the boys real poison, resulting in their tragic end. At least their deaths bring Francine and Snot's mom back together. Francine, I'm so sorry! All I had to do was pretend to like you and none of this would have happened! With some help from Roger, they venture to hell in an attempt to resurrect their sons. Satan brings the boys back, although their moms must remain in the underworld for eternity. But everything reverts back to normal by the episode's end, right? Nope. The episode essentially takes place in an alternate timeline where the moms stay in hell and everyone forgets them. All thanks to Roger's little mix-up. For never was a story of more woe. Number 4. Kidnapping Haley and Abusing Jeff Roger's little crush on Haley soon spirals into a sick obsession. These feelings are too intense! This has to stop! When shooting Haley doesn't change the way he feels, Roger does the next most logical thing. He kidnaps her and plans to skin her, a la Buffalo Bill. Help! Oh, I'm gonna go get my tools! Right after I do a flip! No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm actually gonna get off the bed really carefully. At the last minute, Roger decides that Jeff will be his victim instead. This is the skin for me! Ah! Roger can immediately tell that this isn't working, and in a heartbeat gets over Haley. Although Roger reattaches his skin, Jeff's anguish is far from over. In a later episode, Roger gets Jeff abducted by aliens, separating him from Haley for a couple of seasons. It's eventually revealed that Jeff died in space although they are able to put his brain in a new body. Number 3. Running over patrons for not paying In Kill Bill, the heroine targets five assassins responsible for a massacre that ruined her life. Roger's story is a bit like that, except his motivation for running down five frat guys isn't quite as relatable. After giving them a lift in his limo, they refuse to pay the $20 fee. I can't believe it! I treated them with nothing but respect and civility and they want to stiff me?! Roger believes the only way to settle the score is to make them pay with their lives. One down, four to go. You're really gonna kill five people over twenty dollars?! Are you really asking that to the guy who just last week killed six people over nineteen dollars? Sure, the guys were unapologetically obnoxious, and running out on the bill would upset anyone. Painting the road red with their blood, however, feels just a tad extreme. What's more, Roger somehow runs over the final victim on a plane and, in due course, causes all the passengers to perish. Roger, you got your revenge. Can we go home now? Ah! Roger! I'm sorry, I got the bloodlust! Number 2. Everything Ricky Spanish Did Of all the alter egos in Roger's repertoire, none has committed as many atrocities as Ricky Spanish. There's hardly a person in this town who he hasn't stolen from, cheated, or worse. Everyone hates Ricky Spanish. Ricky Spanish. Jeez, where do we even begin? Well, he kicked an old lady below the belt, looked up a nun's habit with a camera, defecated inside a patient mid-surgery, and those are just some of his more minor offenses. It's me, Rick. <laughs> Damn you, Ricky Spanish! Among Ricky's worst crimes were abandoning Brian Lewis in Tijuana with no way to get home, and taking out Bullock's wife with a katana through the heart. On her birthday, no less. Oh, yes, I seem to recall something like that. So. You're not mad at me? Steve makes the colossal mistake of trying to redeem Ricky, who returns the favor by letting him take the fall, literally, for a sweater heist that he orchestrated with his partner Daniel. I knew you changed! I knew you- ah! Number 1. Causing the End of the World 200 Rogers? 200 me's? I don't understand. Oh, right, I remember. How do you top Ricky Spanish's laundry list of unspeakable deeds? 
Well, being responsible for the end of the world will do it. On a field trip to Langley Quantum Labs, Roger gets inside a Hadron Collider. An interrupted experiment results in an energy burst that releases 200 of Roger's personas, turns Langley Falls into a wasteland, and shuts down power worldwide. I feel like I'm gonna fart. <laughs> Come on, man, just a little wind. Granted, Roger didn't mean to doom modern civilization as we know it, but his incompetence nonetheless caused mass destruction and death across the entire planet. Unlike most American Dad episodes, everything doesn't just go back to normal in the end. So if this post-apocalyptic future is canon, Roger really goofed up like never before. I apologize, everyone. I'm the one who ended the world. Save these babies, though. Ah, oh, damn it, there's a crack in them. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.